night and there are only the sounds of the city to keep us company. Who or what is out there in the vast blackness of night? As this little boy walks along, he is aware that something is watching him, something which is not of this earth. There is something watching this boy, and he wonders what that thing is. Does it wish him well, or is it a force of evil, a force of the Prince of Darkness? What is out there in the night waiting for all of us, waiting to be discovered? Is there something which lurks in the shadows, waiting for us, waiting and hoping that we will make the fatal mistake of not believing in it? Do you believe in ghosts? Do you think there are such things as ghosts? Things that go bump in the night, things which haunt our nightmares with dreams of death and blood, dreams which stagger our imagination as we fearfully contemplate the amazing world of ghosts. What does this young boy see as he walks all alone in the city at night? What does he see as he looks out over the night into the city? What does this young boy think of as he walks through the streets searching for what? The lights of the city seem friendly, comforting, but they cannot dispel the aura of gloom which hangs over the night. Suddenly he hears a sound. What is it? Is it a ghost? Is it a creature from the realms of nightmares? A walking horror which will bring to him the endless embrace of death? Is the boy about to become one of the undead? One of the unholy ones? What will protect him? Ancient man looked to the stars to guide him through the amazing world of ghosts. As we search through the caves of antiquity, we wonder about ourselves, about our lives, and about the possibility of life after death. A realm in which the dead may live again, in which the living will be truly the living dead. All throughout recorded history, man has wondered about the mysteries of the grave and about the possibility of life after death. Is there life after death? Do we coexist with ghosts in our everyday lives? Do ghosts watch us constantly, silently influencing the affairs of men, arranging the destinies of those around them without attracting any notice at all? Some ghosts make a lot of noise. Poltergeists, for example, who throw things around the houses they haunt and make life miserable for unfortunate human beings. These poltergeists can sometimes become very menacing, as some occurrences reported include blood dripping from a ceiling of a house in Pennsylvania, followed by a hail of smashing china and crockery, and a car which inexplicably started up in a driveway outside a house in California and plowed through the front of the hapless victim's house. These are some of the more violent occurrences in the amazing world of ghosts. But other quieter occurrences happen every day. And not all ghosts are evil. Throughout man's history, his literature has told us tales of ghosts of departed ancestors returning to help the living, of ghosts who interceded on behalf of kings to help them regain their kingdoms. And of course, Banquo's ghost in Shakespeare's immortal Macbeth, who foretells the doom of Macbeth. Surrounded by reminders of our past examples of lost cultures which we know very little about, we realize how far we have come in our understanding of the universe. But at the same time, we also realize that we still have a great deal to learn. Museums can show us the works of the past, but how many of their secrets will our artifacts never reveal? When will an ancient sarcophagus which bore a heretical Egyptian priest to his doom ever tell us the horror and pain of being buried alive? When will the knives and spears of lost civilizations ever give up their past to us, their history of blood and terror? Though he did not really understand the workings of the universe, early man liked to pretend that he knew all the secrets of the heavens and invented involved mythological systems, demons and gods who rule the universe and control the movements of the planets. Today we know that such speculation is ridiculous, but the solar system as we know it today was considered a preposterous theoretical impossibility until only a few hundred years ago. For a long time, man thought that the Earth was the center of the solar system rather than the sun. The planets were supposed to revolve around the Earth exactly as the planets really revolve around the sun. Again today, we know better. But dedicated men of science were persecuted and sometimes forfeited their lives as they stood up for what they believed and persisted in their beliefs on the true order of the solar system. Perhaps one day scientists who now believe in paranormal phenomena 
ghosts and ESP will no longer be scoffed at, and the study of ghostly phenomena will be a legitimate study of the scientific community. However, it will probably be a long time before the study of ghosts is accepted. For too long, the entire subject of the supernatural has been cloaked in a cloud of deception and controversy. And often, unscrupulous mediums and fakers have presented cleverly staged displays as truly ghostly visitations. Real ghosts are very hard to find. People have spent their whole lives searching for ghosts in houses and castles throughout America and Europe and never found one. And then, a typical American family will move into a small house in a quiet suburban community and find to their shock and horror that the house is haunted. Haunted by creatures of the night, haunted by monsters from beyond the grave who return from the realm of the dead to haunt the living and exact their terrible revenge upon those who would disturb their rest. And why did they choose to haunt this typical American family? A family which had never before taken seriously the existence of creatures from the netherworld, of things that go bump in the night. Who can say? There is no way of predicting when a ghostly visitation will occur. But one day, perhaps, your number will be chosen. And you will come face to face with a dream of living horror so incredible that it will surpass your wildest fantasies. Yes, there's death in your dreams, too. Death and blood and the realm beyond death. The realm of eternity. As man gazes out across the vast ocean of knowledge which stretches out in front of him, he wonders what he will one day know about the realm of the undead, about vampires, werewolves, witches, ghouls, goblins, monsters, and creatures which walk the earth, although they belong to the dead. There is no way of telling what astonishing discoveries may be unearthed tomorrow and what incredible facts will be uncovered. The sea, for example, has seen many things. The sea could tell of shipwrecks, of pirates making slaves and captives walk the plank, and of sunken treasure buried deep beneath the muck and mire of the ocean, buried treasure waiting to be discovered in a ghostly galleon. But what is the price for discovering such a treasure? What will the lucky person who finds the treasure have to pay to reclaim this ghostly gold from the briny deep? The sun beats down now on the sea, calm and peaceful, where once the ocean ran red with the blood of innocent victims, victims who paid with their lives for the gold now buried deep in the sea. The sands of the sea are like the sands of time, ever changing yet ever the same. History is made and history is erased. Someday there may be no record left that we ever lived on this planet and there will be nothing left to show that mankind once existed on Earth. As the sun beats down on the calm sea, we realize that these things do not matter in the vast scope and sweep of time. The events continue to happen every day which are more incredible than anything that has ever happened before. The world of science has given us listening tools which enable us to monitor wavelengths we could never listen to before. Now, we have infrared cameras which can perhaps take actual pictures of ghosts and enable us to see more clearly what sort of creatures haunt our dreams, sharing our waking world. With these scientific tools, we can take a look at the world of paranormal phenomena and perhaps arrive at a few conclusions.